good day to the respective panel and to the audience. Thank you for being here for my conference presentation. My name is Mariam Ahmed. I'm the Masters of Information Technology. The other authors with me on this study are Dr. Noreen Isa Binti Arshad and Dr. Eliza Binti Sarlan. We're all residing at the Computer Science and Information Technology Department at the University of Technology Petronas. The title of the study that I'll be presenting today is a comparative analysis of students performance using k-means clustering. The contents of this presentation so are going to start off with introduction, literature review, followed by problem statement, research questions, and research objectives, methodology, and lastly, results in discussion and conclusion. So starting off with introduction, as we know, online, online learning and blended learning are increasing drastically in higher education. This leads to challenges of maintaining quality education and students preferring on the type of preferred educational delivery methods. As compared to today, 30% of students are now uh, registered on online courses by, uh, compared to just 10% 10 years ago. Now looking further into the comparison and similarities of the three delivery learning methods. First of all, online learning method which is students do not attend physical classes, learning is self-based, may receive more feedback from instructors to get to know students better. Traditional is they like being face-to-face -to, -face to speak directly to the professor, fixed uh, schedule, able to attend classes at specific and regular times. They're easily distracted. Some students may not have the room of their own or a quiet place at home in which to be online to do their digital projects and blended learning, which is students have been fraternity for a mixture of face-to-face -face and online activities. Schools can set up learning labs or centers in which students can do a rotation. Students who are absent often due to illnesses or business commitments can keep up with their classmates and the workload. The similarities between blended and online are that an up-to-date computer and internet, internet connection is required. Learning can take place most anytime, 24-7, Students who aren't motivated by textbooks might be excited to use their computer or a tablet. Students can take advanced placement courses. Students can make up courses or uh, units needed to graduate, and uh, class teachers take on the role of coach. The similarities between blended and face-to-face -face is that adequate classroom space must be available at the school. The teacher can observe students in person. There is no uh, similarities identified between online and face-to-face. -face. But the similarities between all of the three learning methods is a well-qualified teacher is needed to teach the class. The class objectives and lessons must be clearly stated. And assistance for students must be ready available and students can work collaboratively on projects. So these, this, um, the data that is obtained or the knowledge that is obtained from these methods of learning are analyzed through or using learning analytics which is a process of developing actionable insights through problem definition and the applicable of statistical models and analysis against um, existing or simulated future data. Data mining, which is identifying hidden uh, patterns in a large data set. Educational data mining, which is a process designed for the analysis of data from education setting to better understand the students and the, and the settings we still learn in. In this figure, as you can see, educational data mining technique is um, is based on where the data is extracted from and the type of data that is extracted, such as unstructured data, mobile data, social network, log files, and the data mining techniques that are able to be used in the type of data that is being extracted. So, you know, this could, um, like, for example, classification, clustering, regression, statistics, etc. The implementation of EDM in the previous research has become the methods and tools used in analyzing available data in higher education institutions. As it is an iterative cycle, like shown in this figure uh, demonstrated by Romero, uh, academics and educators that are responsible to design, plan, build, and maintain the educational systems such as traditional classrooms, e-learning, etc., that are used and interacted and participated, communicated by the students. This is um, extract the data that is extracted, such as students' usage and interaction data, course information, academic data, is then gone through the data mining techniques, such as clustering, classification, and etc., to show recommendations to the students who might not be doing well, and to this uh, to show discovered knowledge to the academic responsibles and the educators um, to further analyze on the 
uh, system. Now we'll be moving on to the literature review. Previously, the literature review that has been analyzed is analyzing students' performance attributes. Some analysis do, um, done based on the just courses or grades taught by one faculty members or evaluation satisfaction determining postgraduate students. The summary of, um, so basically instructors that evaluate that based course effectiveness, students' final academic performance in blended course, um, no single methods exist, exhibit superior performance in all aspects of predictions. They use, prediction, uh, they use traditional online students' um, quantitative analysis. The usage of historical data in real time in making predictions for students' overall GPA, but was not tested on students. Um, the factors influencing students' performance in classroom learning are students' equality behavior, the ADM descriptive approach pattern and ADM predictive approach. So basically the summary of literature review is focused on analysis of historical data, uh, historical students' data, and prediction of students' performance based on various um, attributes. In historical data, most common attributes used are GPA, gender, um, CGPA, students' background, etc., and behavior in predictive models used in delivery learning methods. Moving on to the problem statement formulated from literature review. Since there is less research available on comparison of students' academic performance based on traditional blended and online learning methods using EDM, due to the restrictions imposed by um, recent pandemic COVID-19, online learning or blended learning has become the safer choice method of learning and teaching. However, its influence on the students' academic performance is still not known. Therefore, this study will be focused on to use educational data mining techniques to investigate the comparison of students' academic performance using historical data or traditional online learning methods. Furthermore, based on the problem statement that has been formulated, research objectives and research questions have been synthesized. According to Manian, that stated that the traditional and online learning methods are unable to provide the same experience of learning and delivering um, a curriculum content. So this is yet to be examined with educational data mining techniques to comprehend students' um, academic performance. So the first research question that has been uh, formulated for this study is that firstly, how has the blended and online learning methods affected the academic performance of students during the recent pandemic COVID-19 co compared to the additional method? And the objective that is uh, correlating with this question is that to analyze and compare the students' performance during traditional blended and online learning methods through educational data mining techniques. And the second research question uh, formulated is, is that, is there any relationship between identified patterns in students' academic performance during traditional blended and online learning methods? And the objective that is correlating with this uh, question is to identify the patterns of students' academic performance using educational data mining techniques. Moving on to methodology. So this research methodology has um, adopted to the methodology that has been used by Bahara 2018. As you can see, uh, we have two objectives here that we need to fulfill. So the first is to analyze and compare the students' performance during traditional blended and online learning methods through EDM techniques. And the second one is to identify the patterns of students' academic performance using EDM techniques. And these are broken down into six steps. So step one, collection of educational data. Step two, analyzing each attribute and its implications. Step three, pre-processing of data. Step four, data cleaning. Step five, selection of attributes to define input data. Step six, applying k-means clustering algorithm. These will be further elaborated in the next slide. Step one, data collection. So collection of institution data from the repository consisting of SEM1, which is traditional learning, 3,927 rows, SEM2, blended learning, 4,158 rows, and SEM3, online learning, which consisted of 3,630 rows. And this is just a sample of how the data of, um, retrieved look like. Step two, analyzing data attributes. There were uh, 11 attributes that were um, categorized into two categories. The first was demographic attributes, number of students, nationality, name, gender, and academic attributes, which was program, ID number, semester intake, GPA, CGPA, year, and academic standing. Step three and step four is uh, data pre-processing and data cleaning. Uh, data pre-processing is basically includes data reduction and reduced complexity of data or removing irrelevant data. 
is as shown in figure one and figure two shows the um, data cleaning which is to analyze and remove any bad data organizing the raw data and filling null data but as you can see in figure two that there was no missing values for each of the variables in this data step five analysis of demographic and academic attributes so this is for a traditional learning method which is sem one as we can see here the purple box these are these consist of the students that are in the consistent range of academic dismissal, probation, and warning, which are from year one, year two, and year three under consistent low GPA and CGPA. The green box here is where the students have been obtaining good performance, but not during current um, semester one, which is from year one, year two, and year four. In here, the demographic profile stem one, which is um, multivariate correspondence that showed 51.24% were male, 48.76% were female, 97.33% were Malaysians, and the rest were from Bangladesh, India, Japan, Mozambique, Somalia, South Sudan. This is for SAM2 blended learning. Uh, as you can see, the purple box that um, the year one, year two, year four students are consi consistently in the range of academic dismissal with Consistent low GPA and CGPA, the green box is students who have been obtaining good performance, but not during SEM2, which are from year three. And the demographic profile uh, for SEM2 is 52.34% uh, were male, 47.76% were female, 96.607% were Malaysians, and the rest were from Bangladesh, India, Japan, Mozambique, Myanmar, Somalia, South Sudan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Vietnam, and etc. Uh, moving on to the third semester, which was online learning method, purple box, which showed only year one uh, under the consistent low of GPA and CGPA, and the green box of year two and year four students who have been obtaining good performance, but not during this semester. Demographic profile of this semester was 52.58% were male, 47.42% were female, 96.78% were Malaysians, and the rest were from Bangladesh, India, Japan, Mozambique, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Vietnam, and etc. So the methodology that uh, has been adapted is clustering techniques that is uh, demonstrated by Ilatia, who has given the process of the technique on how it is gone through. And the clustering is basically a grouping of set of objects uh, of the same group, more similar to each other. So you can see students uh, attributes go through k-means clustering, traditional learning method, blended learning method, online learning method, of God through the process mining, which generates the model pattern, um, and et cetera. So this is being done for all three learning methods. The data mining approach, which is k-means clustering, is best suitable for the chosen data set and is better than any other data mining approach because the attributes are discrete. So it is necessary to form tighter clusters of students with similarities um, based on Barara 2018. The value of k was determined by using elbow method used to determine clusters in the data set. As you can see in this um, figure, curve at k is equal to 2 and k is equal to 3. So k is equal to 2 achieved a weak accuracy of 27%, and k is equal to 3 achieved 55% of accuracy. Hence, k is equal to 3 is considered a good number of data clustering. Moving on to the results and discussion. So the three uh, clusters that were determined, first was cluster 0, which was demonstrated the high GPA and CGPA of students in this cluster, and cluster one, which demonstrates and reflects or reflects the medium CGPA of students in this cluster, and cluster two demonstrates or reflects the low GPA and CGPA of students in this Moving on to the SEM1 traditional learning method cluster analysis. So as you can see, cluster zero red, which is, which is where 213 students achieved high GPA, where 10.48% were from year one, 12% from year two, 0.76% from year three, 17.33% from year four, and the average GPA is 3.49 and 3.59 CGPA average. Cluster one, which is green, 289 achieved medium GPA, 20.19% from year one, 13.34% from year two, 2.02% from year three, 19.43% from year four, and the average GPA is 2.88 and CGPA 3.02. Cluster two, which is blue, 23 achieves low GPA, 2.47% from year one, 0.95% from year two, 0% from year three, 0.95% from year four, 
1.84 GPA average and 1.42 average CGPA. SEM2 blended learning method, cluster zero, which is red, 150 achieved high GPA, 12.34% from year one, 7.87% from year two, 0% from year three, 11.70% from year four, average 3.50 GPA and 3.65 CGPA. Uh, cluster 1, three, 303 achieved medium GPA, 24.26% from year 1, 12.55% from year 2, 13.83% from year 3, 13.83% from year 4, average is 3 GPA and 3.24 CGPA. Cluster 2, uh, 17 achieved low GPA, 1.95% from year 1. 0.85% from year 2, 0% from year 3, 0.85% from year 4, and the average GPA is 2.23 G and 1.99 CGPA. Lastly, the online learning method, which is STEM 3, cluster 0, 232 achieved high GPA, 17.38% from year 1, 9.44% from year 2, 11.80% from year 3, 11.16% from year 4, and average GPA is 3.45 and 3.63 CGPA. Cluster 1, 216 achieved medium GPA, 24.46% uh, from year 1, 8.15% from year 2, 7.73% from year 3, 6% uh, from year 4, average is 2.89 GPA and 3.05 CGPA. Cluster 2, 18 achieved um, low GPA, 3.43% from year 1, 0.21% from year 2, 0% from year 3, 0.21% from year 4, and the average is 1.25 and 1.08 um, CGP. The conclusion is basically that the above analysis shows that attributes CGPA and GP are important to analyze students' academic performance. Students are consist consistently not performing well and some doing better in a specific semester itself based on the year of undergraduate they are in. Cluster zero representing the high GPA decreased a lot in blended learning compared to traditional learning method but rose again in online learning delivery learning method. Cluster 1, medium GPA of good standing students rose during blended learning methods compared to traditional but dropped in number back in online learning. Cluster 2, the low GPA of students has dropped in both blended and online learning methods as compared to traditional learning. It can be concluded that students' GPA is affected by the different delivery learning methods being carried out during this semester. So this could be based on the courses that they're studying and this would further, uh, for the future work, this would better uh, elaborate further if you know, there's, the students are given a survey on why they could be ba doing better in certain delivery learning method, or a framework that could be proposed to the analysis of the students on um, which uh, delivery learning method is um, useful and is better to be useful, used for the analysis of um, students' academic performance and used by the students and the educators for the future during, um, especially um, during the pandemic and the lockdown. So, so that's all for me. Thank you so much. I would like to sincerely um, thank the authors of this research as, as well as PICESE 2021 for giving me an opportunity to present my work um, to, uh, in this conference. Thank you so much.